Kurt Wagner stands on the Xavier Mansion grounds on a bright summer's night. He exhales as he gazes upon the large full moon above. Kurt? Huh? Oh, hey, Rogue. Sorry, I just had to get some air. Yeah, I get it. It's a lot to take in. You are sure that is what she said? Yeah. I've never touched her, though, so I can't tell you if she's lying or not. That's just what she told me. Sorry if it took me till now to tell you. I... You wanted to have this conversation weeks ago, after the Morlocks fight. I stopped you. I was afraid of what you'd say. Yeah. But I am glad you told me, even if it is a lie. I needed to know what she meant. But she also mentioned the name of my adopted mother, Margali Zardos. I asked her about Mystique and mother told me to drop it. Perhaps. Perhaps it is because she knows the truth and does not wish to tell me. You can ask her again. Now you know what I do. No. No. Mother never likes talking about how she found me. I fear there is only one person who can tell me the truth. Mystique. But I don't know where she is now. No one does. Perhaps not. But I know who can find her. Mystique. Why? Because her and I need to talk. For what purpose? I cannot say it, Professor. Nightcrawler, I need a reason if we are to engage her again. If she has reconnected with her allies, then finding them is to attack them. That is not our way. Because she's my birth mother. <sighs> Kurt looks away, exhaling as he stares at the carpet, and then finally back up to Xavier. Please, Professor. I need answers. Very well. The next day, the X-Men all gather in the mission briefing room. All sat or stood around the round metal table. Xavier presses a button on the central holographic console, a map of the country appearing and then zooming in. Surprisingly, Mystique is still in Washington. She has, however, decided to make it her permanent residence. From my readings, I believe she is living in this townhouse. However, she is surrounded by three other mutant signatures. The Brotherhood, no doubt. Perhaps a better tactic would be to simply report their location and her true identity to the authorities. Sadly, the government is no longer as friendly to me or this school as it once was, and recent events have turned many supporters against us. My word is not what it once was. I doubt they would act on it. Good. I say it's about time we went on offense. Let's go get them. And then what? We can't prove their misdeeds, and as the professor said, Turning them over would likely lead to an incident with the authorities. So we end them. Permanently. What? No! We are not assassins, Wolverine. Nor do we have any right to decide the Brotherhood's fate. We are a force for change, not judges, jury, or executioners. I want to talk to her, Wolverine. Not kill her. Perhaps it is best that I go alone. That would not seem wise, Tovarish. If they attack you... You will be alone. These are not rational people. They are mutant terrorists. I hate to say it, but he's right, Kurt. All right, fine. We will go as a team, but I will go inside alone first. However, at the first sign of trouble, I will call you all in. Agreed? What's so important you need to talk to her about, Kurt? <sighs> I will tell you on the jet, Kitty. The group disperse from the room. Professor, if I may ask, why are you still in your wheelchair? I thought your spine was undamaged in your new body. It is. But after decades confined to this chair, Storm, I find that my new legs are haunted by the memory of the old ones. I do not understand. Imagine if you were suddenly no longer able to fly, Storm and then decades later regained that power. Walking like flying is not like riding a bike. I have forgotten how. I see. But I dread to think of not being able to soar on the winds. 
It is already a little more difficult without the cape you fashioned for me. But I am remembering how again. As will you. Yes. Lelandra is helping me to that end. She is still in orbit, and has been helping me with my physiotherapy. Yesterday I took four full steps unaided before collapsing. That is good. Just remember, you need to walk before you can fly. <laughs> I'll leave that to you, my friend. And so, almost an hour later, the X-Men board their Blackbird jet. Must you bring that thing, Kitty? I'm shocked that the professor even let you keep it. Lockheed's part of the team, Peter. He can help. Mm. Just keep him hidden until then. Dragons are not exactly commonplace in DC. Everyone aboard, stand by for takeoff. As they take their seats across from each other, Rogue looks over at Kurt and extends her green gloved hand. You know, if this is true, that kind of make me your stepsister. Yes. <laughs> Kurt takes her hand. I suppose it would, but a large part of me is hoping it is all a lie. Wouldn't be your first. Lion's what she does. Yes, well, whatever happens, I will always have my adopted family. I'm sure they love you. Have you called them? No need, Rogue. They are already aboard this jet. Oh, Kurt. Shh. Don't tell Logan I said that. Too late. I heard you, Elf. Love you, too. Meanwhile, in her townhouse, Mystique is in the middle of an animated phone conversation. What the hell does that mean? You can't quit now, Eric. You told me to found this new brotherhood in your name, and I did that. Now you're just walking away? Things have not changed. They are much worse. Fine, then. Stay up there on your asteroid. I will carry on the mission with or without you. What the hell was that about? Magnir is quitting on us? We don't need him. To hell with him. He's been corrupted by Xavier's parasites. Just like my daughter and my... Gather the others. The attack will proceed as planned. Sure. Um, which attack exactly? We made like 20 plans. Destiny, you dingo idiot. She's being moved tonight, and we are going to free her. Alrighty. Huh? You expecting visitors? No, I'm not. Raven draws a gun and cocks it. She opens the door, shifting back into her form as Raven Darkholm, and peers upon the figure on her doorstep. A man, disguised in a wide brim hat and long brown overcoat. What do you want? She then frowns as the man shimmers into the form of Nightcrawler, Kurt retracting his hand from his image inducer on his wrist as he looks at her. You! How did you- Xavier, of course. What do you want, Nightcrawler? I think you know, Mystique. May I come in? Ah. Rogue has been talking, has she? I see. Very well. You may come inside. Hang your coat and hat up over there. Kurt enters as Pyro looks on, open-mouthed. What? Mystique, what the hell are you doing? He's an X-Man! X-Man? Where? <clears throat> Nightcrawler. Get him. The trio look up as Avalanche and Blob run down the stairs. Stand down, all of you. This does not concern you. Say what? But Mystique... We Go back upstairs, now. You too, Pyro. Go and work on the plans for tonight. What's tonight? Something that doesn't concern you, Nightcrawler. The Brotherhood trio all look very confused, but shake their heads and disperse as told. Come into the sitting room. We can talk in there. As Kurt follows her, beyond the walls outside, on a rooftop across the street, Wolverine 
and Colossus watch under the cover of night and their civilian clothes. He's in, Storm. Wolverine sneers into his communicator. How will we know if there is trouble, comrade? Oh, we'll know, Petey. They stand in silence for a moment. So, how's your suddenly much older little sister from hell? <sighs> she will not reveal the entire truth to me. All I know is that a being from whatever fire dimension he claimed to be hell took her and held her there. But I know this. It is Ileana. She is still my sister. I only wish I could have saved her from what horrors occurred. It is my job to protect her. You can only do so much, buddy. Because unless you suddenly became a wizard who can portal to hell, there isn't much you could have done. I know. I, I have contacted Dr. Stephen Strange, asked him to be of assistance. Talk with Ileana, heal her. But... I do not know that she wishes to be healed. Will you two shut it already? God, I can hear you from down here. Um, I mean, checkpoint two clear. Ready and waiting in the coffee shop for post three. Some poor sap just asked me on a date. Bless his heart. That's enough, X-Men. Stay vigilant. Inside, the two mutants are now in their true blue forms and sitting across from each other. I'll come right to it. Yes, it's true. I gave birth to you, but I am not your mother. I gave up that right when I left you with Zardos. No, that's a lie. I didn't give you to her. I left you for her to find. It could have been anyone. You could have been found by a bigot who would have drowned you in the river for all I knew. V why? Because my life did not allow for children then. Being with me would have made you a target. By who? It doesn't matter. It matters to me! I am much older than I appear, Nightcrawler. My powers allow me to age much slower than everyone else for some reason. A doctor tried to explain it to me once. I didn't really listen. But the point is that in my long life, I have made enemies. I didn't want that life for you. And yet, yet you chose it anyway. And you had no issue attacking me at the Capitol building? Nightcrawler, if I wanted you dead that day, I would have made it happen. Why do you only call me Nightcrawler? Because that is the name I know you by. Court is a name she gave you, not me. I have no right to call you it. When did you find out? How? I work in the government, my boy. As soon as images of an X-Man appeared with my skin complexion and your father's ears and tail, how could I not know? Who was my father? That is a story for another time. You have somewhere to be? Yes, I do. And unfortunately, now you know that, you will only get in the way. Depends on what you intend to do. <sighs> I'm going to free Irene Adler. Destiny, as you might know her. How? She's being moved tonight. A perfect chance. I still have my contacts that provided the route. And how many people will get hurt for you to be reunited with your friend? It doesn't matter. It very much does. It doesn't matter. Irene is more than a friend boy. She is my... Why am I telling you all of this? Brotherhood! Yes? Subdue our guest and then take him to the base- Sorry, Mother. That won't be happening. In a puff of smoke, he is gone. Damn it! Sweep the area. Xavier's minions can't be far. The two on the roof react as Nightcrawler appears next to them in a blast of brimstone. I think we should leave, my friends. I got what I came for. Split up. Take a straight H. Blob and Avalanche split up in opposite directions, Pyro running down the street ahead of him. Mystique comes from the doorway behind them and looks around before settling and narrows her eyes on the rooftop they are on. Well, we're, we're spotted. spotted. Let's- No, Wolverine. Disengage and return to the Blackbird. That is an order. <sighs> Fine. 
Perhaps you could speed up our escape, Comrade Kurt. Okay. Nightcrawler grabs them both to either side of him. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Below, Mystique transforms herself into an owl, taking off for the roof. She's coming. Hold on tight. They vanish a second before the owl lands and shifts back into the blue mutant. <sighs> she raises her radio. Anything. Anyone. No, they're gone. Same here. Uh, yeah, same. Man, I hate all this running. Maybe he came alone. We'd never be able to catch him if he kept on porting. Perhaps. But either way, we have the mission to take care of. Destiny awaits. Across town, besides the invisibly cloaked blackbird. I will contact the professor on the jet. He can track destiny through Cerebro. The group nod and head towards the plane. Rogue, however, walks up to Nightcrawler. What did she say? She's either a very good liar or... It's all true. She's my mother. By birth, maybe. But she didn't raise you. That's what she said. She also said it was because she wasn't ready to have children. And yet she took you in. Raised you for the last few years. Because she wanted to use me, Kurt. That's all I was to her. A weapon. Maybe. Rogue, Nightcrawler. The Prof has Destiny's location. They're working out a way to track the truck she's in. Coming! 2.34 a.m. A caravan of two police cars, one at either side, escorts a grey truck down the quiet nighttime streets. Inside. This is it. That moment. How I've missed you, Raven. What? What did you just say? You will see. Whoa! Ah! Right on time. Outside, Blob has stopped the truck with his body, holding it in place as the forward police car is halfway into the concrete from a mighty avalanche. And the rear car burns in a raging inferno on the side of the road. The wheels of the truck spin. Hey, boss, I can't hold this for long. Mystique walks forwards on the road now clad in her white battle dress, as she walks up to the truck and opens the passenger door. Get out before we make you. The frantic SWAT-clad officer nervously goes to pull his gun. Bad move. Raven unholsters her own. Stop this and leave, Mystique. Now. The Brotherhood look up, as across the street stand the X-Men. Wolverine pops his claws. Colossus steals up and Aurora brings herself down to land before them all. See? I didn't have to chase you. You came to me. Brotherhood, kill them! <laughs> you got it. My pleasure. Uh, do I let go of the truck? Raven sighs, and then shoots out the tire below her. Yes! Now go! The three rush to meet the mutant team head on. <laughs> The battle ensuing as Mystique looks back to the man holding a gun on her, shaking it as he does. If you were going to use that thing, you would have already. He fires, but Mystique shifts herself into a little girl just in time. The bullet sailing over her head. She then shifts back into her blue form and kicks the gun from the man's hand. His partner, who was driving has now got out and crouches down in cover behind the front of the truck. He sees his chance, coming out and firing, but is blasted by a streak of blazing fire. He is burned to a crisp. You're welcome. Pyro turns back to the X-Men, Colossus having now closed the gap. No! That is a mistake, villain! One you shall pay for dearly! Colossus strikes for Pyro. Pyro rolls out of the way and then rises, firing his fire jet and manipulating it around Peter with his powers. Let's see how hot that skin of yours can get, mate. Or how cold you can get, Pyro. 
Pyro looks to his left too late as a snowstorm covers him and his creation as though they were in the Arctic. His flames going out as he is surrounded by snow and begins to turn blue. Someone get her off me! Sorry, Blaze. I got my hands full here. Rah! Blob sneers in frustration and goes to grab Kitty in a bear hug. But she again phases through and disorients him. Stay solid, you little... He then raises his hands to cover his face as he is blasted by the fiery breath of Lockheed. What the... Is that a dragon? I don't know. I don't know. That's fire! Pyro reaches out and uses his powers to manipulate the fire breath to bring an inferno backdraft upon himself and melt the snow. <laughs> Better luck next time! Pyro is once again blasted by the snowstorm, covered in twice as much this time. Kitty, that thing is not helping. His name's Lockheed. Whoa. She phases again as Blob goes for her. Lockheed, no more fire, okay? The dragon lowers its head, Colossus now joining the fight against Blob. Greetings, Comrade Blob. Ah, man, not you again. Across the street, the road looks as though a massive earthquake has hit it as Avalanche targets Wolverine. But Logan leaps up from one shard of concrete to the other until he begins to get close. Too close. Hope you're gonna pay to repave the road, Tin Man! No! No! Stay back! Wolverine jumps over his head, slashing at his grey helmet and body armor, shredding it. Back at the truck, Mystique shifts into the form of Colossus and uses his strength to rip off the back door. You! Stop! Uh, hands off! The cops inside aim and then fire their guns, but they bounce off the faux metal skin. Colossus then charges into the van and knocks the two down with two swift punches. Why are you helping me, X-Man? I am no X-Man, Irene. And returns to her natural state. Raven, let's get you out of here. She removes Irene's cuffs, and the two partners escape the truck to the road. Stop! Rogue, stand aside. I don't want to fight you. And I don't want to fight you, Mystique. But I can't let you get away with this. She is just freeing me, child. Do we not deserve to live free? Ask that to the honest men and women you just killed. They deserve to live too. They gave me no choice. I don't know how I ever believed your crap, Mystique. You sound just like Magneto. Last time I checked, I haven't murdered thousands or overthrew a nation. And yet your new friends were willing to work with him. And maybe they will with you one day. If you give yourself up, never. The two ladies go to run away. You heard her. Surrender, mother. Now. How I have failed. As a leader and as a mother. That the two of you buy into Xavier's brainwashing. He's controlling you with his mind powers. You know that. The only one doing any brainwashing here, Mystique, is you. I loved you. Like my own daughter. We both did. She gestures at Irene Adler. Maybe deep down that's true. But if you truly did, then you'd stop this before anyone else gets hurt. Raven, behind you, Wolverine. Mystique turns and aims her gun. And a few seconds later, Wolverine launches at her as predicted. But the distraction allows Kurt to port over and double dropkick her down. Raven hits the van and then the road below. Blood now dripping from her mouth as she rises. Besides her, Wolverine now aims his drawn claws at Destiny's throat. All right, now get back in the truck, Granny. Nice and slow. There they are. The gathered mutants squint their eyes and raise their arms to cover them as they look up at two military-grade helicopters above. Open fire! The collective mutants dive for cover as automatic fire rains down upon them. Crawler porting away, Wolverine leaping into the truck, while Destiny and Mystique just make a run for it. Destiny calling out a path to avoid each spray of bullets. Left! Stop! Go! Turn right! Then left! 
No, run! In the truck. Goddamn jarheads! We had them, you thick-headed pieces of gutter trash! Outside, Rogue just takes the fire and flies up to strike the copters. No, Rogue! But they... X-Men! Retreat! Now! Darn it! Next time, boys. The X-Men disperse. Aurora using her powers to produce a pea soup fog to cover the area and their escape. When it clears, only the defeated avalanche and snow-covered pyro remain on the scene. Blob, Destiny, and Mystique are gone too. Soldiers drop from ropes from the helicopters, aiming their guns at the two. Freeze! Pyro raises his blue, shaking hands. Uh, 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 already did, right? Back at the Blackbird, a half hour later. Well, that could have gone better. Two of the Brotherhood are in custody. Two for one, as it were. Yes, but several lives were lost. We failed. I am sorry, mine friends. If I hadn't have... If we hadn't have come, then more would have died. And the Brotherhood would be back up to full strength with all of their members. It was good that we were here. And you got what you needed, I hope? I did. Then let's get the hell out of here. With that, the vertical jets of the Blackbird fire, and the jet becomes partially visible once more as it takes to the sky. We could go back, you know. Finish the job. We know where she lives now. Mutants attack government workers' home? Yeah. Great press. I think we both know that we've done all we can for now. And if she starts up a ruckus again, we'll shut her down. Are you okay? Yes, I believe so. You know, she never adopted me. Not really. So, I'm not really your stepsister. Perhaps not on paper, but as I said, you all are my family. And regardless of the monsters that united us under her care, you are as much a sister as you wish to be. I'd like that. <laughs> the two look up to the seat ahead of them as Kitty turns away with a tear dropping from her eye. On her lap, Lockheed looks equally sad as he rubs his head on her belly. <laughs> you two okay up there? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? You're crying. No, I'm not. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all. You're all jerk. Kitty storms down the Xavier Mansion staircase, marching to the front door and pushing it open with force. Kitty? What is wrong? Professor Xavier is a jerk. Peter follows her as she heads to the front lawn and begins to kick at the stones and grass. Kitty, what has happened? He's demoting me. Demoting you? <laughs> yeah, he said now that kids my own age are here, I should join them. That my place is with the New Mutants and not the X-Men. I see. He treats me like such a kid. Perhaps that is because you're acting like one. Kitty, think about this. You'd still be living here. We'd all still see each other, and you'd just be around kids your own age. I'm not a kid. And neither is Ilyana anymore, Kitty. And she needs a friend. Now, more than ever. She won't open up to me. But you are a friend. Maybe she'll open up for you. You don't want me on the team? Of course I do. I just... Maybe he's right. I take it back. You're all jerks. Kitty storms off towards the grounds out back. I'm gonna go find Lockheed. At least he still believes in me. Kitty! Ugh. Teenagers. She seems upset. Kurt! Oh! I told you to stop doing that, Tovarish. Sorry. <laughs> Overheard from the entrance hall. Should we follow her? No. Let her stew. I'm sure she and the professor will have it out before the day is done. How are you, Tovarish? Fine. Why? Really? Like I told Rogue and everyone else, Peter. I'm fine. Okay, then. Stop it. What? That! Hey, you two clowns want to grab a beer in town? I'm buying. Sure. Why not? But I must insist on getting the second round. 
the trio begin walking towards the garage. If you want your money, I don't get trashed easy. What's the occasion? Family. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Back at the townhouse in Washington, Raven walks up to her mantle and at a picture of her and Rogue. She shakes away a tear and then turns to walk out of the lounge. I'll be upstairs. I need some sleep. The blue-skinned mutant heads up the stairs to the master bedroom. Once there, she heads over to the corner of the room and pulls back a hidden doorway. Behind it reveals a closet-sized room filled with pictures and newspaper clippings, all of them of or about Nightcrawler. Mystique smiles as she gazes upon each one. One of the reports of the found mutant boy, the second is of a poster advertising the incredible Nightcrawler. Many more are by those, and at the end of the room is a small picture. An ultrasound photo of a baby dated decades ago. Tears now freely fall as Raven looks upon it and then touches it. My son, how I wish I could tell you how proud I am that you are mine. She removes the photo from the wall and cradles it. Raven, you have a call. Tell them I'm busy. It's Guy Rich. He says it's urgent. Something about a mutant inventor who is the answer to all our problems. <sighs> On my way. And with that she leaves, heading to her life as Mystique, and leaving behind the son she never knew. <laughs>